It is a near universal sentiment at this point that gamers absolutely despise EA, in large part because of how their greedy practices have marred the integrity of our beloved game development studios and franchises. Whether we're talking about the swift termination of Visceral, known for Dead Space and their now cancelled and repurposed single-player action-adventure narrative-driven Star Wars game, the ruination of BioWare, a studio that has been on a downwards trajectory since EA's acquisition, the butchering of Star Wars titles in general and the egregious exploitation of their exclusivity rights to the beloved franchise, with Battlefront 2 being the latest example, and the desecration of classic PC game series like Dungeon Keeper and Command and Conquer, both of which have been mutated into abominable mobile games. But EA doesn't really give two shits because fiscal year 2017 saw the company earn record revenue, with EA Sports Ultimate Team Modes in particular picking up the slack for Mass Effect Andromeda and Star Wars Battlefront 2's underwhelming critical and commercial performance. And they have no intention of stopping whatever it is they're doing now. Sure, there won't be loot boxes in Battlefield 5 or Anthem, but the fact that they're still willing to push forward with glorified gambling where it counts, EA Sports Ultimate Team Modes, goes to show that it's it's nothing but a tactical retreat rather than a course correction. Now, with such a high degree of financial success, you can bet that the company's top executives are living the high life right now. Just to give you some perspective, back in June 15th, 2018, it was reported by website Bloomberg that some of the company's top executives received bonuses ranging in the tens of millions. More specifically, for fiscal year 2017, Chief Design Officer Patrick Soderlund was the highest paid of the company's leaders, receiving a whopping 46 $0.3 million in equity awards. This is over $10 million more than the CEO himself, Andrew Wilson, who received $35.7 million in total pay, which is still 79% more than what he got last year, according to Bloomberg. 22.9 of Patrick's 46.3 million came from what Bloomberg called a performance bonus via stock awards granted for his key role in overseeing game development. These bonuses were determined by EA's board, which provided the following statement in their filing for these bonuses. We determined that incentivizing and retaining these key executives was critical to the company's continued growth and success. So yeah, for those few out there who are still arguing that games are too expensive to make, that EA has to implement loot boxes to afford their operations, well, look at where a sizable portion of their revenue is going, look how much of it is being pocketed, and tell me again with a straight face. Now, what's particularly interesting about all this is that only months after receiving his bonus, it was officially announced today, August 14th, 2018, that Patrick Soderlund would be leaving EA. The following information comes from an open letter to employees that Andrew Wilson posted on their official website, where he talked about how after working at the company for nearly two decades, Patrick will begin a new chapter later this year, highlighted Patrick's achievements at the company, and expressed best wishes in his next life adventure before thanking him for his contributions. The rest of the letter proceeded to highlight how leadership, teams, and strategies would be adjusted to compensate for this recent change before finally touting the amazing projects they have in the pipeline. No details were provided on what Patrick's next venture might be, but we know for sure that he's definitely moving on from his long tenure at Electronic Arts. Now, something that Kotaku editor Jason Schreier noted in his coverage of this story reporting the massive salary boost that preceded Patrick's departure was the fact that the $20 million bonus he got was incentive for Patrick to stay at the company. Here's the statement EA gave in their SEC filings that Jason transcribed, which reads, quote, in fiscal 2018, the Compensation Committee granted a special supplemental equity award to Mr. Soderlund. This supplemental equity award is comprised of 50% PSRUs and 50% RSUs with a grant date award value of $20 million. The Compensation Committee granted Mr. Soderlund the Supplemental Equity Award in recognition of Mr. Soderlund's key role in leading our worldwide studios following the completion of a record fiscal 2017 and in particular the highly acclaimed success of the Battlefield 1 game. They also noted his creative leadership for all of EA's game development, his valuable design input across the company, including in EA's marketing campaigns and technology innovations, which has now been formalized into his new role as Chief Design Officer. The delivery of award-winning games and services, and deepening player engagement. 
The special equity award also was intended to support the longer-term retention of Mr. Soderlund, given that his creative success, executive experience, and high profile in the industry make him a highly desirable candidate for executive positions at other companies, including our competitors in the gaming industry, as well as broader technology companies pursuing interactive entertainment. So yeah, essentially they try to pay Patrick an additional $20 million for him to stay, given all the money he's helped the company bring, and given all the money he could help another competing company bring. Jason did make a note that it's not clear whether Patrick will be able to keep his unvested equity, but regardless, suffice to say that this guy has made a filthy amount of money alongside the likes of CEO Andrew Wilson throughout the years, raking in tens of millions annually while the rest of EA employees made on average $96,000 a year, according to EA's SEC filings as reported by Jason. Such a wide disparity between executives and ground-level employees isn't all that uncommon. As a matter of fact, within the same article, Jason links to another report titled Activision CEO made $28.6 million last year, 306 times the median Activision employee. But just because such practices are commonplace doesn't make this stuff less stomach-churning when you consider even a fraction of what executives earn could be used to give the ground floor employees sizable, well-deserved bonuses or to diminish EA Games' dependency on ruinous in-game purchases. As for why Patrick Soderlund decided to leave out of the blue, well, nobody knows for sure right now. On a surface level, there is definitely the impression that Patrick simply took the incentive money and then ran away with it. But we don't know if the $20 million equity bonus is something he'll be able to keep after such an abrupt departure, and it's certainly possible he was planning to leave for a while to pursue other endeavors. Or perhaps he got burned out by all the recent controversy throughout 2017 surrounding the company's business practices, particularly where Battlefront 2 is concerned. Regardless, what EA's grand gesture to retain Patrick suggests is that he's been a tremendous asset for the company, though that doesn't necessarily carry a positive connotation with gamers. For many years, Patrick essentially oversaw development of EA games across the board for all the studios under the company's umbrella, which means he played a major role in the way games like Battlefront 2, among other botched EA titles, were monetized. On the other end of the spectrum, Patrick did help kickstart one of the company's only bright spots, the EA Originals program, through which EA funds indie games under their umbrella, helps them market them and sell them, gives them all the creative freedom they need, and the revenue earned from copies sold all goes to the developers. But it's still hard to overlook how under Patrick's leadership, EA flourished financially while the quality of their games suffered tremendously as a result of greed that's only filled the pockets of executives, and that's the legacy he'll leave behind in the eyes of disillusioned gamers. There is no denying that Patrick is extremely good at his job, but when that job involves nickel and diming players, not sure that's something to be proud of. Not to mention all the bullshit he spouted over the last few months in a piss-poor attempt to address the Battlefront 2 controversy and other points of contention. Back in April 2018, when speaking to website The Guardian, he had the audacity to say that it wasn't EA's intention to create a slot machine or to take people's money with Battlefront 2, as if to imply that the way paid loot boxes resembled gambling was somehow coincidental, or that their implementation of loot boxes didn't involve meticulous planning. It was a ridiculous thing to say when some of EA's loot boxes, like the ones found in Need for Speed Payback, straight up spin and sound like slot machines. Speaking to The Verge, Patrick expressed the notion that implementing pay-to-win loot boxes was a necessity to afford a long-term life service like Battlefront 2. But fast forward to today and we're seeing executives perfectly content with pocketing dozens of millions of dollars for themselves annually. Then, not long ago, on June 2018, when speaking to website Games Industry about the negative reception against Command & Conquer Rivals, the mobile game EA unveiled at E3 2018, he said that gamers make the mistake of saying that they know what they really want, implying EA knows better, while declaring that going mobile felt like the next natural step for the Command & Conquer series. In the same interview, he talked about how fairness and not implementing pay-to-win is now all of a sudden this important pillar for the company. But when inquired about how FIFA Ultimate Team's card packs could be seen as pay-to-win, or at least pay-to-gain advantage, Patrick went right back to lame justifications like how players are given the choice of not having to play Ultimate Team because the rest of the game offers enough for $60. 
Honestly, this guy is just as proficient in the art of bullshitting as the likes of CEO Andrew Wilson and CFO Blake Jorgensen, and from a consumer perspective, he'll hardly be missed. Now, I'd like to think that Patrick's departure could signify a brighter future for EA Games, but as long as the likes of Andrew Wilson continue to steer the ship, I can't say much will change about the company's morals, ideals, and practices. For that to happen, EA would need a fundamental overhaul of its leadership, or overseers like encroaching government bodies and their loot box legislation to keep them at bay. Until then though, I would expect this to still be the same EA we all know and hate. And Patrick, well, with the dozens of millions he's pocketed from psychologically manipulating players, having banked enough money for a few lifetimes worth of retirement, I'm sure he'll get by just fine. I'm sure he won't lose sleep over all the beloved studios, franchises, and games he's helped devastate alongside Andrew Wilson. Anyway, that's it for this news update and discussion video. Thank you for tuning in. If you enjoy my content and would like to support this channel directly, consider donating on Patreon. And to be further updated on all things gaming news, reviews, and discussions, stay tuned right here on Yong Yeah. I'll see you guys next time. Yong out.